Okay, so one important compound in your body are carbohydrates, and so we are going to do a lecture about carbohydrates. So basically, carbohydrates are going to be sugars, and they are going to contain um, an aldehyde or ketone groups and have at least two or more hydroxyl groups. Their carbonyl group is the aldo or keto group um, with a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen, as we saw. Okay, sorry, I lost my pen. Oops. So carbonyl. And remember that group was in the al al aldehyde or ketone. Then you have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. Um, and also classification is going to be based on how many carbons, so the number of carbons. Um, the position of your oxygen hydrogen, so of your hydroxyl group. Um, on an asymmetric carbon, so you're going to have D or L sugar, stereoisomers, isomers, and things of that sort, which we'll discuss. Now, monosaccharides, carbohydrates, monosaccharides, um, the os is used as a suffix. If you have a carbonyl carbon is an aldehyde, it's called an aldose. If the carbonyl carbon is a ketone, it's called a ketose. And then you have the number of carbons. Three is tri, four is tetra, five is pentose, six is hexa, and seven hepta, etc. So carbohydrates, yeah, okay. So carbohydrates, the general formula is shown here, where you have one carbon, one oxygen, and two hydrogen molecules. They are going to be polar, so they are water soluble. Um, you're going to add phosphates to carbohydrates. And this makes it more polar. And this is a way for cells to keep the sugar or carb inside. It cannot cross the plasma membrane with a phosphate. Um, and so we have our aldehyde or aldo aldohexose in this case, because you have your six sugars. And we have a ketohexose in this case with our um, six carbons, not six sugars, sorry, six carbons. And we added here a phosphate group to that six position. So this is glucose six phosphate. Phosphate's attached to the six carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, in the other case, the ketose is a fructose. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some terminology. We have stereoisomers isomers that have the same formula but different structures. Okay, and so we have our asymmetric carbon which is also called our chiral carbon. And a chiral carbon has four different groups attached. Okay, so here is our molecule with our chiral carbon in the middle. Um, so most biological molecules will have one or more chiral carbons. All right, and so here we have um, 
D-glyceraldehyde, and we have L-glyceraldehyde, and then we have our chiral carbon, which is this carbon here. And usually in a biological system, only one chiral form is active. Okay, the other is just going to be that mirror image of itself. Um, so the D-glyceraldehyde and the L-glyceraldehyde are going to be stereoisomers. Okay, um, now there are also two common isomers are going to be cis-trans isomers. And then this is where you have um, a cis form. So here's cis, and then you'll have a transform. And so these are isomers, a cis-trans isomer. And the other common isomer is what we've been talking about is the chiral um, carbon. Um, now, if you have a non-superimposable mirror image, um, if the chiral uh, carbon is present, this is referred to as an enantomer. Okay, and so you can also have epimers of each other, and they can be um, interconverted by epimerases, such as D-glucose, D-mannose. Um, and so we'll, we'll have in many of our, um, our biological pathways, epimerases. So you're just moving things around, you're not really changing um, how much carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, etc. are there. Now DNL, so the position of the hydroxyl group on the last symmetrical carbon. So you look at the last symmetrical carbon. You look at the position of the OH on that last symmetrical carbon through this blue. So here's this OH here and this OH. And depending on what side it's on, if it's going to be on the right side, I'll do it this way. Right side is called D. Dextro rotary. So it rotates right. And this is going to be um, in a light polarized plane, which we don't have to pay too much attention to that. And then let me do this one in red. So, and then you have L. Laboratory, which rotates left. So in biochemical, most sugars are D. Unless they say otherwise, so always assume it's D. Um, sugars that have more, one, more than one chiral carbon have more than two stereoisomers. Um, and so if you look at all of these guys down here, you can see that we have D-glucose, we have D-mannose, we have D-galactose, and these are all aldose, 
and we have D fructose, and we have D ribose. Um, as an, an antimer, again, is a mirror image with a chiral center and a molecule um, is symmetrical. So here's just an example of a glycer aldehyde and antimer. Now, the, um, the nice thing about your um, sugars is that they are going to form ring structures in our aqueous solutions, which of course our cells are. We have our carbonyl carbon, got the red, which is also the anomeric carbon. Okay, and so that's where we're going to form most of our bonds. So the most stable monosaccharide structures are going to be the pyranose and the furanose. And so if you look in an aqueous solution, which is what these are, you will see three species. You'll have an alpha glucopyranose, you'll have a beta glucopyranose, and then you'll have D-glucose. And you can see that the linear structure is the least amount in an actual solution. So the enantiomers are going to be the uh, glucopyranose, uh, alpha, and beta, and they are going to be at equilibrium with the open chain structure in the middle. But basically you can find all these species um, in a solution. Now sugars are also gonna be able to have substitutions, of course, and these substitutions are important. Um, and so we can have both oxidized sugars and we can have reduced sugars. Where oxidized sugars are going to be sugars where we are going to take away a hydrogen or an electron or add an oxygen. And so in our reduced, we're going to do the opposite. You're going to add a hydrogen um, or um, remove an oxygen or, or, and to make it reduced. So if you look down here, we have our D-gluconerate. And here, which is oxidized, we have deoxyribose. So that's where the deoxy, you're um, reducing it, deoxygenizing it. And it's at this position two here where you've taken away an oxygen. All right, so glycosidic bonds join. So again, we've talked about this a little bit before, but um, again, we have our um, anomeric carbon shown here, and it's going to form an N-glycosidic bond. This is the nitrogen. And so that's with um, adenine, one of the bases. And then here you have an O-glycosidic bond, which is a beta-1-4 linkage, linking two um, sugars together, galactose and glucose, or lactose. Here we have a picture of starch, which is similar to what we're going to see for glycogen, where you have your O alpha 1 6 linkages, or you'll have your alpha 1 4 linkages. And finally, just a quick note about our polysaccharides. So, our glycogen is going to be stored sugars, um, and they're going to have those um, alpha 1 4 and alpha 1 6 bonds that we just talked about in starches. Starches are going to be stored in plants, so they have similar structures, but just in different um, places. Cellulose is only in the plant cell wall. It is going to have beta-1,4 linkages, and these are going to form fibers. So cellulose forms very tight fibers, and so these are not going to be digestible by us because we don't have an enzyme to break that beta-1,4. We have enzymes that break our alpha-1,4, but not enzymes that break those beta-1,4s. So you can see the beta-1,4 
bonds look different than our alpha-1,4 bonds. So enzymes cannot work, the same enzyme can't work on those.